Hello and welcome to UC Today. I'm Tom Wright and I'm delighted to be joined by Mark from Destiny. How's it going, Mark? It's great to see you again. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. It's great to have you. Um, we're going to be talking about the team's voice space today. It feels like there's always something happening in this space, doesn't it? But um, to kick us off, I wonder if you could talk through some of the challenges you're finding uh, the service providers are facing when it comes to leveraging Microsoft Teams. Well, I think, um, obviously, you know, Teams is continuing to change and evolve at a pace and grow at a pace as well. So I, the challenge is, you know, how do they work with Teams? I don't know if they can, uh, you know, defeat Teams now, <laughs> but uh, certainly, you know, that there are, um, you know, as Microsoft develops the product, I think what they do really interestingly is leave gaps. And in those gaps is where you can find opportunities. And I mean, that's where we kind of built uh, some of our original innovation was in the gaps that Microsoft left. Um, so I think, um, you know, if you look at where Microsoft are going, look at sort of opportunities are open and up by leaving space around what they're doing. You know, how do you fill the space with a solution to come to create a, a new customer offer? Um, you know, when they brought in things like direct routing on Teams, that created a huge amount of opportunity for all the telecom industry to start putting calls into Teams. And, um, you know, that's where we, we saw the gap really between Teams and the PBX and built our core to team service, which we'll talk about. But, uh, yeah, I think... You know, you can see it as a threat. You can see it as a continuing, evolving, you know, list of opportunity opportunities as they create more, more gaps, more spaces for people to to innovate around them. I think, and um, you know, they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of generating the market, generate demand, publicity, customer understanding around some of the new things they're doing as well. Which, you know, some of the new tech they're delivering has been a struggle for the market in a legacy sense, um, but now they're they're putting it into the mainstream. I think. Um, you know they're starting to 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 reinvigorate some some old tech as well as new tech, which uh, we can talk about. So, yeah, that, I think that's that's generally my view is it's um, there's more opportunity than threat actually if you look carefully. Yeah, and um, you know, as you said, there's always something happening in this space, and I think it's probably fair to say a lot of service providers maybe don't have much experience in terms of working with Microsoft. So I wonder how I wonder if you could talk through how you're helping them take advantage of some of these opportunities and, uh, and jump in some of those gaps that Microsoft are leaving for them. Yeah, sure. I think, I mean, Microsoft, in, the way you in, internally work with Microsoft on a technical level can be quite complex. You know, they've got this thing called PowerShell, which, you know, scared a lot of people off uh, some time ago. But I think um, with things like, uh, the, the way in, we innovate is with middleware. So we're all about connecting teams to other stuff. We We tend not to run the other thing. But certainly we create a bridge from Microsoft to existing partner services like with a UCAS, for example. Quarter Teams was uh, you know, a great way of bridging Microsoft Teams into an existing PBX or UCAS so that you could use Teams effectively as a phone on the PBX. And that way, continue to deliver your core value as well as allowing the customers to get the end user experience, which they're kind of looking for. So I think you know, we're thinking about combining technology to deliver best of both worlds to customers. Uh, is an important uh, way, you know, important way to look. Um, you know, when quarter teams has grown massively successfully over the years, and I mean, some of it's right place, right time with COVID, but we were doing well before that here anyway. And I think it just goes to show that, um, you know, if you can deliver to customer just what they want, so it's it may be a combination of two or three things, then I think you can be successful. And one size doesn't necessarily fit all. I think Microsoft see that as well. You know, Teams is a great phone system, but is is the guy down in the tire shop? you know, who's fitting tires on a car going to be using Teams as his phone system? I don't think so. You know, it's just not appropriate for those types of environments. So, um, yeah, I think we can look at, you know, and our partners can look at, you know, where can they add value? How can we bridge the value they add also into the market where Teams is being successful as well? So um, quarter Teams was our, our kind of first view on that, which is connecting a PBX. We then realised that uh, customers also did want to just bring telephony to Teams through kind of SIP trunks and so on. Uh, we're, where we kind of evolved the quarter teams to do trunks. Um, now we're looking at further evolutions of that core product as well. Uh, things like our quarter teams go, which is uh, a really slick soft phone experience in teams in a native way. So we're not we're not launching separate software. We're actually using the teams client as the soft phone onto your PBX. Um, you still need a separate PBX. So we're not replacing what Microsoft are doing in that, but we're giving people an alternative to have a native teams dialer with their existing phone system and therefore, um, you know, get, again, get the best of both worlds without having to pay that extra license to Microsoft for something they're not going to use. So that's, um, yeah, we see that as being fantastically successful um, this year and in, into next as well. And then 
There are other innovations we're doing kind of under the covers. So there are some really subtle things you need to do when you're bridging two platforms. And so um, our Teams True Transfer um, and True State uh, options are going to give customers a really well joined up experience. And, and the end user experience is what it's all about. You know, the end user just has to work as they expect it to do. They, you don't want to have to re-educate users to do something of the equipment. It's got to work just as they expect. And so then it comes back to us as a technologist to make sure we deliver into that. So we deliver the technology to make sure that the customer, the end user, has that really intuitive uh, experience. And so those types of innovation is what you need to be doing to be successful. You have to really think from an end user experience perspective, make sure that you can deliver you know, really seamless, joined up uh, and intuitive experience. And as you said, call to teams has been sort of the, the core of the offering, but you've been developing the portfolio. Um, could you talk through some of the other innovations you've been working on around teams? Yeah, sure. I think, um, you know, Microsoft uh, direct routing was the first incarnation of how you connect phone stuff onto teams. Then they brought out this operator connect offer, which is really delivering more capability into the administrator of the organization. Um, you know, direct routing is quite a technically complex thing to do. And some organizations who, you know, got, got a grip of that, started to, to, to use it. Operator Connect really is um, about delivering telephony in a much more kind of customer friendly way. So effectively a load of phone numbers turn up and the admin can just assign them to users, which is effectively what they want to do. And we can emulate that with our call to Teams Trunks product, but uh, Microsoft kind of did a bit of catching up there, I guess. And so with Microsoft launching um, Operator Connect. We're, uh, you know, quite lucky to be one, you know, working as one of the accelerator partners, which they've chosen to help customers get on board with that. Uh, and when we say customers, those are the actual telecoms providers, the people who are going to be providing the lines and minutes to the end customers. Um, so we have our Carrier Automate product, which is, you know, massively capable beyond just Microsoft, but it's there really to provide the bridging between. Microsoft um, Teams and, and Operator Connect interface all the way back through into the telecom operator. And that really fits with some of the work as Destiny, you know, Destiny very much a, a for service providers organization. And so we have a, a great, you know, uh, portfolio of service provider customers who are taking advantage of that from us. Um, and I think the other thing which we're doing with Teams and also other um, UCAS is, is taking some of the Destiny technology around uh, FMC. So have effectively using a cell phone as an extension on a phone system. So you get all the extension like capability, but it's actually in your cell phone. So you can use extension dialing, do call transfers, and, and also have your own work identity on the phone, which doesn't interfere with your personal identity. So we are delivering FMC, which for Destiny is quite old technology. I um, mean, this was around from you know the, the early 2000s. And um, we are taking that now with Microsoft bringing this again to market with their Teams Phone Mobile. They are kind of creating an education place where people understand now what FMC is and what the value proposition is. Up to now, it's been quite a difficult sell, especially in without dual SIM capability. But now phones can take two SIMs. We can give you a business SIM, which is your extension. You can keep your personal SIM in a phone, which is your own, own number. You don't need to confuse the two. They're very cleanly separated. And the other key thing, as I mentioned, you get the end user has the native experience of the phone, so they don't need to learn to use another app. They dial a number and they choose the SIM and it makes the call. It's just you know, all about what technology do you need to underpin to get that end user experience to be absolutely the best it can be. So um, yeah, our FMC product, which in fact is kind of world leading, we've got million, 2.3 million daily users on that already, um, but now it's, it's kind of coming into its second life really with Microsoft kind of kicking off a new market paradigm. <laughs> I hate that phrase, but they are effectively saying that um, you know, FMC is now an established um, use case for connecting your mobile workforce and, and others into your phone platform. And um, we're, we're now exposing that across multiple UCASs. You know, Teams is not the only fruit here. We're, we're now being able to connect, um, you know, any end user back to their business phone system using uh, Destiny Converge, which is very much a sort of universal FMC. It's not necessarily tied to any phone platform, but it does allow that really um, kind of sensible end user experience, which is just what they expect, how a phone should work. And uh, you know, it works with all their Bluetooth accessories and so on. It's just, um, it's native. And I think Quarter Teams Go and, and FMC are both about delivering the native experience, but with something else behind it rather than what they were necessarily expected to be. So. Yeah, that's um, that's some exciting stuff, which is uh, we're innovating, and this is really 
you know, we, we started off with corporate teams, but we are very much branching out now, going into adjacent um, technologies and adjacent markets. We're not not going to completely switch, but we're finding that we're gradually building a wider and wider technical and sort of customer ecosystem around this whole premise of joining things together and making new and interesting offers by connecting three or four parts. I think you've definitely validated my point at the start, which was there's a lot going on in this space that has been for a while, and I think there will be in the future. And that kind of leads me to my final question, Mark. I'd like to ask you just to give us a glimpse into what you expect to be coming down the line around this space. Well, I think, um, yeah, we'll see, I think we'll continue to see Microsoft innovate. We, their, their Azure communication services, we still, you know, that's a massively powerful toolkit. We, and there's some interesting stuff can be done on that. Um, I think also, you know, Microsoft will never be the only provider of telephony. Um, the other UCASs are available. Our carrier automate platform will allow you to connect any UCAS to any carrier effectively. So if you want to bring carrier services into, into Zoom, or, or WebEx or, or others, then we can do that with one one intermediate platform, which is really appealing to the telco operator because they only connect once and we can give them a whole range of customer you know, endpoint services across different platforms. Um, so we're, we're pressing on with that kind of aggregation level um, across on a global scale. And we, we've expanded our business you know, massively globally. Now we've got you know, full follow the sun support. We've got people based all around the world and um, we are you know, definitely poised to, to really help in this space. Um, and I think what we're looking for is, we're, we're looking to increase our operator partners as well as our UCAS partners, really bringing more and more people together as well as now mobile operators with FMC, building quite a interconnected ecosystem of different, um, you know, different people in that space. But by joining them together, everyone gets more value and everyone can deliver a, um, a really innovative and different, differentiated customer solution. Um, and customers, they always want to do some weird and wonderful thing, right? So, um, and if you can deliver and address that, you get the deal. And that's, um, that's what we're finding. So we're looking for uniqueness around what we do f from a partner perspective so that they can go and capture opportunities by doing something really special, um, which customers are delighted by, you know, and that's something we're really keen to do. You know, I love talking to customers and, and listening to what they want. And that's how we get most of our innovation, actually, is just let's talk to customers. It's the best place to be. Okay, Mark, it's been great talking to you. And I've no doubt when we speak in a few months, there'll be something else weird and wonderful to, to go through that's uh, changed in the market. But in the meantime, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, thanks, Tom. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and a share on social media. And we'll see you next time.